Hey there, amazing viewers. Welcome back to my channel where we dive deep into the world of programming and make it accessible for everyone. Today's video is extra special because it's a viewer request. One of our awesome viewers left a comment asking if we could create a tutorial on building an API for converting audio to sign language using FastAPI. Well, your wish is our command. Today, we're going to fulfill that request and embark on an exciting coding journey. But before we jump into the code, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way, you won't miss any of our educational programming content. And if you have your programming friends who might find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to share it with them too. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's get started with our viewer requested fast API tutorial on audio to sign language conversion. Before we dive into the fast API magic, we need to set up a clean development environment. We'll do that by creating a virtual environment. This ensures that our project dependencies won't interfere with other Python projects on our system. Let's start by opening your terminal or command prompt. Make sure you're in the directory where you want to create your fast API project. Now follow these steps. Check if you have virtual env installed. If you don't have it, you can install it using pip. Pip install virtual env. Once virtual env is installed, let's create a virtual environment. We'll name it something like faster env to keep it clear. Now let's activate the virtual environment. On different operating systems, you'll use different commands. Great, you're inside your virtual environment now. You'll notice that your command prompt or terminal prompt changes to indicate that you're in the virtual environment. With the virtual environment activated, you can now install all the necessary packages specific to your fast API project without affecting your system-wide Python installation. Now that we have our virtual environment set up, it's time to start building our fast API application. We'll create a main.py file where all the magic will happen. Now we're ready to start coding. You can either follow along with me in this video or use your preferred code editor. Now let's make sure we have all the essential libraries installed and imported for our fast API project. If you haven't already installed these, follow along with these steps. Let's start by installing FastAPI, the core library for our API development. Pip install FastAPI. Once FastAPI is installed, let's install Pydantic, which is used for data validation with FastAPI. Pip install Pydantic. Next, we'll need NLTK for text processing. Install it using pip install NLTK. We'll also need the uvicon ASGI server to run our faster PI application. Install it like this. Pip install Vuticorn. Now that we have our libraries installed, let's import them into our main.py file. We're all set now. We have fast API, Pydantic NLTK, and uvicon ready to go. To receive input in our fast API application, we'll create a Pydantic model. This model defines the structure of the data we expect from the client. In this case, we want to receive a sentence as a string for conversion to sign language. Let's define this Pydantic model. At the top of your main.py file, below your import statements, add the following code to create a Pydantic model named item. In this code, we define an item class that inherits from base model which is provided by Pydantic. Inside the class, we have a single field sentence which is of type string. This field represents the sentence that we'll receive from the client. Now let's set up our faster PI application and create a root endpoint. We'll also use uvicorn to run our application. Below the Pydantic model, add the following code to create an instance of the fast API app and define a root endpoint. This code, we create an instance of the faster PI class named app. 
Then we define a root endpoint using the at app.get forward slash decorator. This endpoint returns a simple JSON message. Now let's add the following code at the end of your main.py file to run the fast API application using Uvicorn. Now let's dive into the exciting part of our fast API application. Creating the endpoint that will convert audio input into sign language, we'll use a post request to receive the input sentence in your main.py file below the code we've previously written. Add the following code to define the A2SL endpoint. In this code, we use the at app.post decorator to create a new endpoint at the path forward slash at 2SL. This endpoint expects a post request and it takes in an instance of the item pydantic model as its input data. We extract the sentence from the received data and convert it to lowercase. In order to convert our input text to sign language, we need to understand its structure and meaning. That's where tokenization and part of speech tagging come into play. These steps help us break down the sentence into its constituent words and identify the grammatical roles of those words. Now add the following code to tokenize the input text and perform part of speech tagging. In this code, we use nltk.word tokenized to break the input text into individual words. This helps us understand the structure of the sentence. Next, we use nltk.parse tag to perform part of speech tagging on the tokenized words. This means that for each word, nltk will tell us its grammatical role, such as noun, verb, adjective, etc. This information will be valuable for our text to sign language conversion. Understanding the tense of a sentence is crucial for generating accurate sign language animations. We'll use NLTK's part of speech tagging to count the number of verbs in various tenses in our input sentence. Now add the following code to determine verb tenses. In this code, we create a dictionary called tense to store information about the verb tenses. We count the number of verbs in each tense using list comprehensions and NALTK's part of speech tagging. For example, for the future tense, we count the words tagged as MD, modal verbs. To prepare our input sentence for sign language conversion, we need to filter out unnecessary words and lemmatize the remaining words. Additionally, we'll exclude common stop words. Add the following code to filter and lemmatize words. In this code, we first define a set of common stop words that we want to exclude from our text. We create a word net lemmatizer from NLTK, which will help us reduce words to their base form. We initialize an empty list filtered text to store our filtered and lemmatized words. We loop through the words and their part of speech tags, checking if each word is not in the stop word set. If it's not a stop word, we lemmatize it based on its part of speech verb or adjective and add it to the filtered text list. Finally, we update the words variable with the filtered and lemmatized words. To make our sign language animations more fluent and natural, we'll make a small modification to our words. Specifically, we'll replace I with me to better reflect sign language phrasing. Add the following code to modify the words. In this code, we initialize an empty list called temp to store our modified words. We loop through the words in our sentence and check if each word is equal to I. If it is, we replace it with me in our temp list. Otherwise, we keep the word as it is. Finally, we update the words variable with the modified words. To create accurate sign language animations, we need to consider the tense of the sentence. Let's determine the probable tense and make adjustments accordingly. Add the following code to determine the probable tense and make adjustments. In this code, we first determine the probable tense based on the counts we calculated earlier. We then check the probable tense and make adjustments to the words list accordingly. For example, if the probable tense is past and there's at least one past tense verb in the sentence, we add before to the beginning of the sentence. We also check for the future tense and add will to the beginning of the sentence if it's not already present. If the probable tense is present and there's a present continuous tense, we add now to the beginning. Finally, we convert all words to lowercase to maintain consistency. Now let's talk about the videos list. This list contains a collection of animation videos for various sign language expressions and words. These videos are like the building blocks of our sign language conversion project. You can add the videos list like this.
This video's list contains a wide range of expressions, letters, and words, each associated with an animation video. When we process the input sentence, we'll use this list to find the corresponding sign language animations for the words in the sentence. By matching words in the sentence to these animations, we'll be able to generate a sequence of sign language gestures that accurately represent the input text. Now let's discuss what happens when we encounter words in our input sentence that don't have corresponding animations in our database. We want to make sure we don't miss any part of the message. Add the following code to handle words without animations. In this code, we start by initializing an empty list called filtered text to store our filtered and title cased words. So we loop through the words in our input sentence. If a word doesn't have a corresponding animation in our database that is not in the videos list, we split it into individual characters. This ensures that every part of the sentence is conveyed, even if some words lack animations. If a word is in the videos list, we keep it intact in our filtered text. After processing the words, we title case all the words in the list. This step ensures consistent capitalization for a polished sign language output. Finally, we update the words variable with the filtered and title cased words, and we return these modified words. This process ensures that our sign language output is comprehensive and effectively conveys the intended message, even when some words lack animations in your application code, which may reside in a different application. You can use the words list by calling a PI inside the application. You'll map each word in the words list to the corresponding animation video file with the same name. This mapping allows you to display sign language animations that sync with the input sentence. For example, if words contains the word hello, you'll use it to load and play the hello.mp4 animation by matching words in the sentence to these animations. You create a dynamic and engaging sign language output that accurately represents the input text. Now that we've developed our faster PI application, it's time to run it and test the API using the interactive documentation provided by Faster PI. This makes it easy to experiment with different inputs and see how our API performs. Open your terminal or command prompt and navigate to the directory where your main.py file is located. Run the Fast API application with auto reloading using the following command. Once your fast API application is up and running, you'll see output indicating that the server is running on a specific address, usually 127.0.0.1.8000. Make note of this address. Open a web browser and navigate to Docs Endpoint. This URL will take you to the Swagger UI, which provides an interactive interface for testing your API. You'll see a list of available endpoints, including a 2SL for your sign language conversion API. Click on the A2SL endpoint to expand it. You'll see an interface to input your test data. In this case, you can enter a sentence in the sentence field. Click the Execute button to send a request to your API. You'll see the response from your API, which will be the processed words ready for sign language conversion. You can repeat this process with different sentences or test cases to see how your API performs. Remember that you can also use this interactive documentation to test your API's functionality thoroughly and ensure it meets your requirements. When you're satisfied with the results, you can integrate your API into your application or share it with others. Congratulations! You've now completed a significant part of our educational series on building a sign language conversion application using FasterPI. We've covered everything from processing input sentences to adapting them for sign language animations. But our journey doesn't end here. In the next part of the video, we'll take the exciting step of deploying our faster PI application to make it accessible to users worldwide. Stay tuned for the upcoming video, where we'll guide you through the deployment process. We'll make our sign language conversion tool accessible on the web, allowing people to easily convert text into sign language animations. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest tutorials. If you have any questions or comments about what we've covered in this video, please feel free to leave them below.
Your feedback is essential to us. Thank you for joining us on this journey to make information more accessible through sign language. We'll see you in the next video, where we'll deploy our fast API application and take another significant step forward.